What does Tennessee need to improve on? And that will be brought to you by Zen Sports. So four downs brought to you by Zen Sports. Have you downloaded that app yet? If you do, be sure and use the promo code hooked. I'll tell you more about it here in just one moment. Four downs. Four questions. Four answers. The Dave Hooker Show. Four. 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 Downs. A presentation of offthehooksports.com. So the talking point in the offseason was UTSA is no pushover. Now that we've seen that they're not as good as last year, one and two, and lost to Army last week, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and say Tennessee gets the win in this one. So I want to talk about the X's and O's of this game, Fred, and what you want to see as a player and how you want uh, Tennessee to improve. As always, Cooper Mays, get well soon. He leads us in. What should people do, Coop? Cooper Mays here. Hit like and subscribe. Do it. Coop here. First down. All right. Priority number one. Fred, at the end of the day, if you could say this unit is better so it was a successful Saturday. What would it be, or one area of play? You tell me. One well, area area of play for this week to be yeah, better. Just, yes, for UTSA. Offensive line. Um, we had to be dominant up front. We need to be able to get back to running, rushing for two hundred yards in the game. And also, I like to see us stretch the football field. We need to get some deep balls going down there, and I, and that, that's some of the things I want to be able to see. Um, let's light the scoreboard up. Our receivers need to be a little bit better in catching the ball. Um, but I want to see our offensive line dominate up front. All right. What down is it, Coop? Cooper Mays here. Second down. Caleb? Fred, looking at the secondary, given what they have in the breakdown, can they be good or great, or are they going to stay average? And I'm talking to somebody, I'm going to to throw a bone here because of last segment. I'm talking to somebody who was part of an amazing secondary in Tennessee. So (laughs) I appreciate that, Caleb. You know, I think they can be really good. I really do. Um, And I always say this, myself and Dwayne Goodrich talk about this all the time, and Dion. One of the things that helped us be good in the secondary was our pass rush up front and what we could do with our front seven. Um, getting pressure on the quarterback with just four guys. That's something that you can do to make your – if you can do those things, it helps your, your, your defense your backs be able to cover longer. Um, getting, to the, getting to the ball, just getting to the quarterback and tackle. We got to do a better job of tackling. That's one thing we have to do a better job with in the secondary, making some hits. I hope we did a lot of tackling drills this weekend <laughs> because I need to see us tackle better. Yeah, really. All right. What down is it, Coop? Tennessee center Cooper Mays here. Third down. When I ask you about, and you would know about this specifically because in 98, Jamal Lewis went down and you guys handled that incredibly well. When I ask you about mental fatigue from injuries, first remind everybody that four downs today is brought to you by Zen Sports, the new sports book in Tennessee, revolutionizing the way you earn sports betting rewards. That means no more deposit bonuses that turn into deposit nightmares on Zen Sports. What you see is what you get with their cash rewards program. You get a lot of cash for a welcome bonus, earn an unlimited 5% cash back on your betting volume for your first 15 days when you sign up promo code hooked. That's right. Hooked unlimited 5% Mm -hmm. cash back Keep betting and keep earning with up to 3% cash back on your betting volume every month after that, and refer friends to earn a percentage Mm -hmm. of their betting volume as cash rewards too. Zen Sports, bringing the cash back to Tennessee. So if you bet big on sports, you want to be betting on Zen Sports. Zen Sports betting just got better. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-889-9789. Must be 21 and over in Tennessee to bet. So I'm assuming there had to be some mental fatigue mental blow when Jamal Lewis went down you guys rebounded and handled it just fine Fred but I'm curious with with Tennessee losing Keenan Pilly losing Cooper Mays how much do you think that affects just team morale in general aside from the fact that they're really good players uh that's weak-minded for an athlete in my, in my opinion if you're on a football team and somebody goes down and you're thinking oh man we're gonna be no you gotta go get it man that means you got to go extra hard because you lose, you lost one of your stars. When Jamal Lewis went down, the first thought we had was, man, we got to go harder. We got to make sure guys don't score now. We got to make sure guys don't get over 100 yard rushing now. 
we got to make sure that we're offensive, we're extra blocking extra hard for our running backs in the back because they're not Jamal Lewis. But I think everybody picked up their game, and it made us work harder because we knew we didn't have a choice. You lost, if you lose a superstar like that, you got to figure out ways to get on the football field and give it everything you got. That hundred percent you just gave, I need about five to ten more percent now. So that means you got to go all out at all times. That's why if you were loafing on the football field or in practice, we didn't make those. We made somebody, you know, you had to do twenty five push ups for that. You drop a you drop an interception on the football field. Let me get them ten push ups on the field. I don't care if it's in the game. And I know you guys saw that when we played. Dion did a few of them. So did Dwayne Goodwin. <laughs> I remember. I that. mean, but those were things we did to say, you know what? Let's step our game up. It's yeah. not we treat and, re- and, and react differently. No, you step your game up, plain and simple. Yeah, but you never had a turnover bucket. <laughs> no, but Joe is a turnover trash can. <laughs> <laughs> but, exactly, right. and it was trash. <laughs> what, what? <laughs> he should have jumped in the trash can himself. All right, what down is it? I'll let you see Senator Cooper Mays here. Okay, my man. playing the trouble. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, fourth down, Caleb. Roll. Okay, Fred. I know I have a feeling I'm, I know what you're going to say on this and I am going to agree with you, but I'm going to ask this on behalf of Tennessee fans. So you can, um, you can shut down the Tennessee fans that are asking this as they ask it. So what go. do you say? What do you say to Tennessee fans that are trying to say it's Nico time? I say there's a coach that we pay a whole lot of money to get this job right. And if he's that person that's making that type of money to make this decision, and his track record has been pretty good, I say I'm going to listen to him rather than somebody who's not the coach, who's not getting paid $5 million a year, and who has not coached a down of college football. So that's what I say. Yep, that's fair. Peggy Joe Hill says, and listen, if I didn't know that Peggy Joe was from Tennessee, I do now because her name's Peggy Joe. Uh, said, Cooper Mays, we love you. The Hills, South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. Uh, go Vols, Fred White, great seeing you. Absolutely it is. And this from Smoky Mountain Red. I haven't played in years, and Fred has me ready to go out there and break a hip. Well, I've, already done, <laughs> I've already done that once. I'm not going to break the other one. But, Fred, how quickly will you know in this game that Tennessee's ready to play, ready to shut up the critics, and ready to put the Florida game behind him. How fast do you see that? I need to see that in the first drive. I need to see them come out with a different attitude in the first drive to know that they're going to dominate this football game. Plain and simple. That's what they need to do. They need to come out on the first drive to make those things happen. If it's on offense, you need to score first drive. It needs to be fast. If it's on defense, you need to get them off the football field in three plays or less. Plain and simple. You got to go out there and get the job done. I mean, the focus is on getting better, right? Then get better. Show me you got better during the week. Yep. Football Friday with Fred and that Sunday show with Fred, which we'll have on Sunday, is brought to you by friends at the Herald Group Security Solutions, leadership experience, specialization, addressing problems through unique mission-specific mitigation techniques, also making your children safer one school at a time. If you're at a private school, your kids are there. We've heard about the tragedies. Go to your school administrators and tell them about heraldgrp.com, the Herald Group Security Solutions. They'll make your children safer. We're going to get those in public schools before it's all said and done. So, Fred, how do you see this game shaking out? I need to see us get back to scoring 40 points a game. So I'm going with at least 40 points for UT, and I'm going for uh, – I really don't want them to score more than 13. That's where I am for a score. But dominance-wise, I need them to have over 20 yards rushing. I need us to have over 300 yards passing, and we need to put up some points. Yep, absolutely. And – Last comment I want to pull, Smoky Mountain Red said, like the Cal kickoff in uh, Knoxville two years ago. There have been a couple of special times, uh, Fred, but what are some of the games that you remember most that the tone was set by the fans before you guys even took the first snap? Any that stand out in particular where you're like, this place is electric? Well, Dave, I was fortunate enough to play in games at the University of Tennessee that were all sold out. And the crowd was always loud. And they were always in the game. And they made teams call timeouts at least two in the first half. 
You know what I mean? Two in the first quarter, leaving with one. There you go. Every time, every time I played in Knoxville, that's what it was like. These guys are just getting to that now, you know, to back what it was like to have that feeling. But from the time I touched the football field at the University of Tennessee, I never had a game where I didn't think the crowd was in it. Yeah. Ever. They set the tone from day one. Love it. And Ke- uh, Caleb, how bad would Fred have been if he didn't have fan support? Fred would have been great. <laughs> by the way, <laughs> by the way, Fred, I will say, I, 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 my, Fred knows me. I find my spot and I just kind of <laughs> dig at it. By the way, I spoke out of turn last week, though, because I gave y'all credit. And you guys did, you and Deion Grant did a great job in that 99 Florida game, but most of the defense did. Andre Lott was not ready for that Florida game. I watched a little bit of film on that, but I will say that. Now we're calling out players. Uh, but that did, he he became a great cornerback. It was his, it was just his second start at the time. So, but what I was going to ask you, Fred, um, mm-hmm. was this game uh, last week. One of the only things that I think kind of bothered me watching it, and it's for people that are wanting Joe Milton, that are calling for Joe Milton's head, which I think is totally unfair. Are you noticing, is it bothering you at all that it just doesn't seem like the receivers are fighting for jump balls the way they were last year? And I mean, don't want to mention any names, but I think we know some names uh, on the team right now. But it just seemed that there were a few jump balls downfield that people are going to blame Joe Milton for maybe not throwing it right on the spot. But receivers got to fight for those, right? I I think you got to fight for every ball that goes in the air. If the ball is in the air, my whole thought process, I coached high school football a long time ago. And I used to tell my guys all the time, if the ball is in the air, the ball is ours. So if the ball is in the air as an offense, the ball is ours. Go get it. And usually, if there's a pass in the fence call, it's usually called for the offense. So do everything you can to go up and get that rock. Everything. Now, I, I'm not going to hop on my receivers. I think I think the fact that the game flow has been different, but I need y'all do, I do need y'all to step the game up. I do need, I mean, because Without receivers, the game doesn't work in our offense. We got to have some guys that go out there and get their rock. And I think we do have some that can go out there and get it. It's just now putting it together and doing it and stop reading press clippers before the season starts. I was talking to a parent of a current player. It's a young player. I'm not going to name who it was. Mm -hmm. But I said, the first thing you need to do is, and he he didn't do particularly well in the first game. And he said, you're going to say, don't listen to the media. And I said, yes, don't listen to people like me and don't listen to that stuff. Don't read your press clippings. There's nothing to be had from that. Now, as far as our listeners, you need to listen every day and hit the like and subscribe. button. (laughs) But you, you do have to insulate yourself. And Papa Jay says this tweener year is going to be interesting in between in between two great quarterbacks, Hendon and Nico. Well, 98 was supposed to be uh not a tweener year, but a down year because you didn't have Peyton Manning. So I don't buy that mindset at all, Fred. So let me let me say this too. How do we know Nico's going to be great? We don't. He hasn't played a down. He has potential. And I do. I think he can be great. I do. I think he has, a, you know, all the intangibles to be great. So does Joe. They all have, they have intangibles, but here's the thing. You haven't done anything yet. So I can't tell me you can't tell me he's a great quarterback yet and he hasn't touched the football field in the division one football game as a starter. I think he has an opportunity to be. But again, potential means what? You haven't done anything yet. Fred, you go to practice. You you've seen him whip it around. And I know he could get in the game and spit the bit. I've seen a ton of players that look great in practice that were five star guys and do that. Like, Nathan Peterman. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. But as far as a guy that can whip it around, just what do you think when you see Nico? I think he has great arm talent. But keep in mind, ain't nobody hitting him in the game, in practice, rather. That's true. And he's everybody, like, looks, he's, everybody looks good with shorts, with shorts and shoulder pads on. I mean, I'm just saying. I know a lot of guys who look amazing in shorts and shoulder pads and nobody's touching them. Well, and you guys, and and Fred, you guys also, I think it's important before the 98 season to point out in spring practice, you guys were live, which made T. Martin tougher, which made your entire team tougher, and probably ended Joey Matthews' career. I think it did end Joey's career. (laughs) He wasn't ready for that as a high school kid coming out of high school. I don't think, you know, he came in early that year. I don't think he was ready for that. 
and he was going up against a defensive line and linebacking crew and you know secondary that was bound for NFL the next season. So yeah. I mean, I couldn't imagine that standing back there quarterback as a freshman at 18 years old. He might have been even 17 years old at that time. And and it's Billy Ratliff, Sean Ellis, Don Walker, and Corey Terry coming out. I mean, all those guys got drafted except for Billy Ratliff. And if Billy didn't get hurt, he would have been a second or third round draft pick. So, yeah, I – I think we did kind of end his career. I'm not, I'm not laughing about it. I'm <laughs> like, man, what were, we, what were we thinking about going, you know, live on quarterbacks that year? That was insane. Yeah, that never happens, and it it didn't even happen back then, and it worked. Um, well, didn't they want to? Didn't you guys want to incorporate with T the option back into your offense a little bit? Wasn't that the initial no, plan? I didn't want to run the option. No, oh, I, I didn't want to run the option. Uh, and I, <laughs> let him drop back and pass, and if he needs to run, he can run. T was more Charlie Ward than anything. Okay. Good comparison. That's a great comparison. And, and you know, the, the other thing with Joey Matthews that I'm, I'm just thinking about, because I thought he had a really strong arm and I cover, I actually did play by play for one of his games. Um, can you imagine showing up and you're facing one of the best defenses? Not it, just in that year, but of that decade and in school history. That would then just they tell you you gotta go. Then they tell you it's live. Well, you can actually get hit. I, I don't know. I might have transferred <laughs> as an 18 year old quarterback. Well, and to, it's and, and Fred, remember this too. Like now, midterm guys, you know, they get focused on football, so they're bigger and they come in and they're more ready to play. Back then, if you got one or two midterm guys, that was a huge deal. So you can't tell me physically he was anywhere close to the midterm guys we see nowadays. No, he didn't have a spring in our weight room program. I mean, he was coming directly from high school. I, I mean, that was a tall task that I asked for a kid that was 18 years old and to play it. Hold on, and play in Sevier County. He didn't play nowhere near the talent he was getting to walk into at UT. And you know, the other thing that hurt him, Fred, is when they had the open scrimmages that you guys would have at night. There would be 30 or 40 of his friends and family that would show up because anybody could get in and that probably just put more pressure on him. I, it's no, funny I, how even good players, if things go wrong and you're not in the right setting, we see it in the NFL, you can go south. You could put Nico, Joe, Hendon Hooker, Peyton Manning in that situation as a freshman and they live, they weren't going to do well. Against that defense, they weren't going to do well. I'm sorry. That was a, That's one of the fastest defenses you ever – I can still go now to current day and go 40 for 40 time for every position, and we're still in the top five, maybe top three. Man, Speaking this. of that, for getting hit and things, Fred, do you think also one of the reasons I'm not high on Nico because you're seeing practice, I feel like he needs another off season in the weight room is what do you think? He just seems a little too thin still to me right now. I mean, I think he's thin, but, I, but here's the thing. I, like I said before, I'm going to go with what Josh Hypo says. He's a quarterback. He's the offensive coordinator, too. He's put some guys – everywhere he's been, his quarterbacks have done well. Everywhere. Name a place that they haven't. Yep. I mean, oh, right. even at Missouri, those guys did well. Wherever he's been, his quarterbacks have done great. So I'm going to go with the guy who's a quarterback guy over me. Sorry. There you go. Well, maybe All the right. Falcons finally have a quarterback, Fred. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm holding out for Shadur Sanders uh, to get drafted by the Falcons in about a year or two. That's well, you'll actually have to lose some games. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry about it. We'll find a way. This is the letter Falcons we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I want to get your thoughts uh, at some point on the whole Deion Sanders thing because I find it fascinating. Like, if I could up and cover one thing – it might be Colorado football just because it's insane. He would have a problem with me not calling him coach. You have to call him Coach Prime. I've never called a coach coach except for Johnny Majors because I grew up watching him. Dave, why do you think I wore number two in college? He's I've been my a favorite football player of all time. It ain't nobody better than Dion, in my opinion, playing football. He is my all-time favorite football player. So we, we got Boo Carter. 
that, that Tennessee's committed to. And now he's going to Colorado. He said just for a visit, he wants to take advantage of that. I believe Tennessee fans should be concerned because the way things are rolling in Colorado. What about you? I think if any player goes to see Deion Sanders, whatever school he's committed to or whatever should be concerned. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Um, I mean, the guy has Lil Wayne coming out, bring the team out, man. I mean, they, they've changed the way you look at college football forever when it comes to entertainment and just different things. Different. Something we've never seen. Now, people are going to copycat that at some point. But to be the first to do it, see, I don't see. Crazy. I don't even know if I don't even know if they can copycat it because I think there's only one Dion. I don't I think, think there's, there's only one Dion. Dion. But yeah. I, but I look at I look at some of the things we could do here in Knoxville. You got what you got the number one country music singer in the world from our area. His name is Morgan Wallen. If I'm Tennessee. I'm bringing them down. I'm bringing them out for Georgia game. Mm. Wait, well, he does have a date down in Te- uh, Austin, Texas, that same date. But I'm I hope he would. I think he would probably cancel that one to do a concert in Knoxville at the stadium. I'm just saying. <laughs> wow, Fred's got the Georgia week wow. planned.